we're going to start is and before we um, open up the meeting, does anybody have any additions to the posted agenda at this time? Yes. Uh, updates on Brook Street and some complaints. Okay. That's old and new business. And Marvin. About the park and about the high school graduation. <laughs> All right. Good morning. I mean, afternoon. Good evening. Did you have any additions to the agenda that you would like to make? You're just here for the show. All right. Great. All right. Then we'll start. I don't think Tom is going to make it. He had something going on tonight. So I'll start by um, offering to accept the minutes from the last select board meeting, which I found right. I second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. That goes. Posted this in the, we warned the meeting. Yep, yep, and we did um, post the meeting and it's on the website. Yes. And emailed to interested parties. Did you get an email this time? I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, do you want to be added to the list? You want to be added to the list? Okay. All right. <laughs> so we have um, on a... Uh, Yes, you're you're up on front there, Frank. You wanted to. Um, I, I was going to be in the back row. But I, well, I mean, you're up front on the agenda. You're up front on the yeah. agenda. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, you know, I'm I'm here tonight uh, to address Maple Hill Road infrastructure resiliency. Um, and I realize Maple Hill Road is a very long road that stretches up and up and up beyond. Mm -hmm. I mean, even up to where Tom lives. I mean, that's really beyond electricity and beyond yep. phones. Uh, but but what, I'm, what I'm especially interested in, although, although if you drive there, you see, if you drive up Maple Hill Road, you see a lot of work that's been done there on, um, you know, culverts and whatever. But what I'm concerned with particularly is the is Maple Hill Road from that access road being down to probably 73. And, and probably in, in terms of this latest um, storm on April 15, um, you know, down to about where John Berrio lives on Maple Hill Road. Yeah. Um, and and um, I, I asked you at the, at, at the last meeting, um, you know, whether you would have some kind of um, information you could offer us on the plan for trying to make sure that uh, damage such as happened to my property, happened to, you know, Greg White, happened to, you know, Doug Billings, Dave Chase, and mm -hmm. Mary Frances McIntosh and Don Perio, that that, 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 that uh, damage wouldn't happen again, so. God, don't do it again! <laughs> <laughs> but no, then seriously, um, oh, now no, that no, it's no, in, I, yeah. I, I should, <laughs> that's our plan. No, I mean, really, I, our, our plan is ongoing maintenance and improvement of the roads in the, in the culverts and, you know, um, increasing culvert sizes and, and, you know, working on the ditches and there's, but seriously, there's, there's no way we can guarantee that that won't happen again. No, I didn't say guarantee, yeah. I said try okay, to Try to sure. not, yeah. I didn't say guarantee. Yeah. Okay. I said try <laughs> to make sure <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. that this does not happen yeah. again. But this general maintenance yeah. and color, I mean, that's just blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You yeah. have specific plans, so yeah. what are they? So, uh, uh, you we called in a gentleman named Jim Ryan from the state of Vermont. He's a state engineer. Oh, good. And he is the one that has been uh, designated for our district. Um, he's our engineer in how all of the roads and the ditches are graded and or ditched um, according to the municipal roads permit grant that um, we have conformed to, which is under the umbrella of the Clean Water Act. Um, we did have a meeting with him uh, about your concerns. We discussed it with him. Um, he actually did take a ride out to the site with our highway foreman and we should be getting some type of 
comment or results from the meeting back from him probably during this week because we met with him last week um, to see if he think we were also looking at Wing Farm Road so he was looking yeah. at that whole area yeah. and uh, we'll we'll see if he comes back with any changes to what the state mandates us to do in that area but he did say that he would but I, but I know that um, I know that I know that um, John Champion. I don't know. I keep wanting to call him Cooter, but that's not. He's my yeah. that's not everybody else calls him. Yeah. Okay. No. Cooter. Yeah. Right? I know he's had conversations with Chris Lloyd about. I mean, there are there are right now two cones on Maple Road, one up beyond, one um, one just below, um, you know, the Larry's place, because because that basically drains onto what is. Uh, you know, Lloyd land. I mean, I thought it was National Forest land, but it's not. It, it actually belongs to the Lloyds. And I know there's a cone, another cone, you know, up, up, um, up just above, you know, Greg White's. Uh, no, actually, it's, it's, there, there is one culvert that is right at the, right above Greg White's driveway. And the next one up uh, is another culvert that has another cone on it that actually, I mean, it, it um, in, during Irene, that actually took a lot of water because it actually worked. I mean, I mean it, it was open and it took a lot of water. And uh, actually, I have some spectacular pictures of you know water that's coming down toward the clotheslines and then going right angle out to the edge of the property. And I think that's uh, thanks to some work that Harvey Construction did on uh, on on this uh, on, on this property of mine that. Um, um, you know that um, that you know that we bought. I mean, but it was it was built on a, on a meadow. Um, but um, but I, but I but I think there's you know work planned. I mean, I, I think there's work planned for that call, and it makes sense because there's a channel that would feed into. Mm -hmm. and, well, in uh, the very beginning, Frank, yeah. um, and the, it was a two-week period where we were in an emergency mode to get all the driveways open, get yep. everybody mm -hmm. out, um, and get the roads passable. Um, that stopped after that second week. We had two weeks to do that type of work, and then the emergency was over. Yeah. So now we have to go through the procedures of uh, having an engineer look at it, putting it out to bids, you know, now we have to go through the slow process of getting these things looked at. So um, we will be working on all of those, especially where probably where you see a cone. Correct. Right. <laughs> um, but but we can't uh, we can't knee jerk that. Now we are no longer in emergency mode, so we have to go nice and slow and pull in engineers. No, I understand. Actually, that's what I was hoping to hear. That that's what either you, you had an engineer or that mm -hmm. VTrans and FEMA had. I mean, I know they were there because I shook hands with them and introduced them to my rhubarb. That's so and they were, they were there. We were still were waiting there. to hear back from yeah, them. Yeah, I haven't heard back from them. Yeah, we're no, still no, waiting I'm not to hear surprised you haven't heard back from them. So I'm wondering whether it's going to be a, probably a slower process. Right. But, but, I, but I assume that. I mean, I, I think the bulk of the money is probably you know, lower Bethel Mountain Road. Uh -huh. But I mean, I would think if they were there, they were seeing a catastrophe on minor roads too. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what they did with Route 100 because I'm seeing some properties that have, I mean, you know, boulders that were strewn out on them. And people, you know, and, and I know people have lost driveways and whatever. Mm -hmm. So, so I would assume there would, I would hope there'd be some money for. We haven't for that. officially received yeah. the FEMA no, no. designation yet. Yeah. We weren't no. declared a disaster zone by FEMA yet. No. We're still hoping God shines down on us for that too. Yeah, as, as for your opening thrust, do and I was, yeah. Yeah. I was going to come here with all kinds yeah. of pictures yeah. to um, to reduce to um, nonsense your claim that this was somehow an act of God. I mean, just I mean. I mean, certainly it wasn't like the um, 2008 storm, August 7th, I believe that was, where I, where I was living in Granville, and I was kind of, uh, you know, ankle deep in water walking back from Vermont Home Bakery to, you know, where we were living on, Ma on Master Hill Road. And this storm, it certainly wasn't Irene either. No, no. But, it, but uh, still, but guess, it had impact, for I sure. I guess an act yeah. of God is somehow, yeah. somehow, that's invoked in some loose kind of way, unless it's a term of art. 
Does it actually mean something specific? But I, I guess I want to talk to you since you seem to have information. Um, is, is it, is that, does that mean something specific? Well, an act of God is something that, that goes beyond what the infrastructure can sustain. Um, you know, the amount of rain that then it, it gets classified as a disaster. So, you know, if you look up the de definition of a disaster, it, it's disaster is not what is normal. So, um, but, but it doesn't mean we can't control the weather. It doesn't mean anything specific. It's not a term of art. It's not doesn't a term of art. No, I yeah. don't think there was much art involved in, on April no. 15th in oh, the morning. I'm, so sure, was, I'm sure you know what I mean. <laughs> I think it was you know, an act of something nature. That, something that specifically affects a certain number of roads. It's a, a certain specific number. event, right. yeah. Okay. Um, it was a thunderstorm that kind of sat on top of us for a while. Yeah. After a very warm day of snow melt, Mm -hmm. and a, another day in between of rain. So we went from snow melt to rain to a thunderstorm. Right. Well, the culverts were still frozen. Right. <laughs> For the most part, a lot of them were. Some of them were, not, not all of them were, but there was also a lot of debris from the winter that even when they were not frozen, the water flowed with lots of branches from storms that had happened during the winter time, and it was easily, easily clogging the culverts. So will that uh, inform us in terms of culvert maintenance in the future? There is well, one culvert. I understand that you cleaned the day or two days before right, the storm and had turned around and clogged right up again. You know, yeah. The cleaning the middle week before yeah. the storm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. I mean, I yeah, really, you know, being yeah. in August, it didn't have the debris that traveled on, you know, the leaves were still on the trees and all of that. We still had a lot of debris in the woods everywhere that traveled with the snow down through in the rain and all of that. All right. Actually, I, I did bring pictures to you. You did? I did. <laughs> I, this is, I mean, this talking head stuff, that's not good for video. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I saw this road on that yeah, day. Yeah, oh, good. Both, yeah, good. Yeah, Both Jude and I saw yeah. every road on that day. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah I, I think actually you, you waved hi to me or some, somebody did. We would have done that if you were there. Yeah, I don't Absolutely. know about Dune. I never saw him. But, you know, no. okay. I was driving. No, I mean, I think I saw you. I think you waved hi as mm -hmm. I was trying to, trying to. I was up there a couple times. Oh, right. I don't think yeah. I, have, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you were up there, Dune, but I yeah. never saw you. Mm -hmm. I never understood you. I don't know why you wouldn't just come in and, you know, walk the, you know, walk the disaster area, wouldn't he? Actually, Tom did. That was good of him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these are, uh, this is, you know, some, some of my, some, some of the stuff that's littering my refrigerator, right? And I, and I, 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 I just, this is Greg White's, um, well, what, what used to be, this is on the, on the day of the storm. This is, um, uh, this is where his driveway disappeared. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's his, that's his mailbox up there. So the whole driveway disappeared. Um, you know, I just, you know, just below it. Um, so I was, um, but just above his, just above his driveway, there's a culvert, and that, um, that, that empties into a, actually a very small, you know, um, uh, that actually is, is an undersized culvert, and it, that actually drains right onto my property. And um, during Irene, that, actually, that culvert actually worked very well too. So there was all kinds of, um, you know, not only water, but um, the stuff that's, um, you know, preventing me from having a garden today um, that was heading right to my um, LP tanks, so. right? So I guess I had a question about, um, you know, ongoing, whether there was any thought to, I mean, this, this call would, it does, doesn't seem to me it does much good. Because basically, I mean, it just, I mean, that that driveway just became, you know, part of, you know, the uh, the debris that um, ended up in, you know, Doug Bill, in front of Doug Billing's shed on top of, um, well, that, that mm -hmm. yeah, That's on right. top of, um, you know, Greg White's uh, garden. Actually, he's he's done a very good job of, um, you know, going with it and. Yeah, it's, it's, I guess he's a real promoter. I guess I'm not. I don't know. So, okay. right. 
but I mean, I, 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 I was wondering whether any thought had been given to uh, orienting some of the culverts so that they're not, I mean, this one doesn't seem to be doing much good. I was wondering whether any thought had been given to orienting some of the culverts so that, you know, water, you know, would carry down into the deep ditches that are there. I mean, right now, I mean, that culvert, I, I think it was put in when, um, you know, when my house uh, was a meadow. I mean, that, that, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, uh, the house that um, we got from Jim and Shirley, Shirley Billings was built on three acres of meadow. And I think when that culvert was initially installed, it was, you know, it was emptying into a meadow. So I'm wondering whether there can be any thought given to reorienting that culvert in particular, right? Uh, because, I mean, if we have another severe storm, then I guess I'll be looking at my LP tank going somewhere. Right. Um, and also, I mean, this photo, I mean, I shot it uh, the last time I was here, but I just wanted to point out that it's not level. I mean, the, the, way, the, the way that road is uh, at that particular, uh, the way Maple Road is as it heads toward that intersection with Wing Farm, it's basically sloping so that whatever water doesn't end, whatever water overflows that ditch or whatever ends up being carried, you know, into properties, mine and Doug Billings and, you know, just down the road to, you know, Mary Francis, McIntosh, Chris Kuhn and Don Berrion. Mm -hmm. And they really experienced, you know, damage there today, there uh, during the storm. So I'm, I'm wondering whether uh, there's any thought being given to I mean, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I see the grader going up and down, you know, putting down that white stuff in the gravel. It just seems like, oh, yeah, that's what's in my garden right now, all that stuff. So I'm wondering whether any thought could be given to, instead of grading, I don't know, it's, instead of grade, grading a row that is, uh, is at this angle, whether any thought might be given to orienting that grader so that it's carrying water to the ditches, right? It's, it's, it's got to be tipped on both out. sides. Say again? Did the ditch side wash out or the other side wash out? Say again? Did the ditch did side the wash ditch out or the other side? side wash out or did the other side wash out? The other side washed out. And you know why? Because there's no, there's no possibility at all for, right now, for a berm, for a ditch. I mean, this, this, this is like a, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll try not to get upset because I'm still angry and I'm trying not to be, take anyone's head with me as I'm going, right? But there's the reason why there's so much damage on the, as you're heading, as you're heading down, the reason why there's so much damage on the right side is that there aren't ditches, there aren't, there aren't berms, there aren't, there isn't anything there. So that, so that the, this water, on, on a road that's sloping like this, I mean, it's, I mean, my property is a setup for that. And, and, and frankly, I, I think the way, I think the way the, the roads have been handled uh, is setting me up for another one of these events. And I'll be damned if I'm gonna let that happen with, without doing something about it. So I'm saying, yeah, you're saying, where did, where did the damage happen? Where I was, where I and my neighbors were set up for it to happen. Because there aren't ditches, because there aren't berms. There isn't anything to stop that water. Where it should be going is in that big ditch. But, yes? Half of it from the road well. When the road is crowned in the center of the road, a raindrop that hits in the center will split and run both ways. But again, you're not responding to my question. But the road, the road, I mean, we, we can't have, have we're not allowed to have a berm on the downhill side. No, I'm talking about orienting, I'm talking about orienting the grader so that you, but I, I'm, well, Frank, the, the, yeah. the issue is that a road can't just be, you know, berm one way like that. It's It's got to be high in the middle, and so it sheds water to both sides. I'm not talking about a berm. I'm talking about channels for the water. Grading it yeah. in such a way that the water carries into the big ditch where it should carry. Right now, it's just, I mean, well. Yeah. It's sort of like it's what's happening at the bottom of the Brook Street. The road is totally graded. 
to wash everything into our backyard. There is nothing, nothing that channels the water anywhere. It just comes right dumping into our backyard, which is why twice now mm -hmm. we have had to take care of that ourselves. With yeah. it, I can relate. Thank you. Anyhow, but this, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I hope I'm bringing something specific to the discussion from what I'm just observe, observing. But frankly, um, I mean, I, I hope, I mean, what I wanted to do was to bring some, you know, ideas here that might be, you know, longer term solutions, maybe before, I don't know, whatever. Well, maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. when the engineer gets the feedback is the time to start right. to find out what that feedback is. And then right. you bring but I'm, what I'm hoping to do right now is to give some feedback that might get fed into, you know, the engineer's thinking. Because, I mean, but, but right now, the way that culvert is oriented, it's heading right toward my LP tank. We've already started I, that and, wheel turning. And, and, and I, think, I think it was designed that way because it was metal. There wasn't property there. I mean, I would guarantee that. <coughs> All right. Also, I wanted to call attention to, um, what is it, July 11th? There'll be a planning commission meeting. And um, actually, this is, I mean, this is good, actually. Um, and actually, a lot of people here right now are there. But, but one of the goals of the Planning Commission is to develop resiliency strategies to protect the citizens of Rochester, their homes and businesses, and public infrastructure from the damage that can occur during natural disasters, particularly in the floodplain. I'm interested in that. I mean, I, I, I was hearing uh, Annie address you know, the problem of, mm -hmm. you know, you know what about the possibility that 100 is cut? You know, where are we in terms of anyone getting here with Brook Street the way it is? Uh, this is already, this is focused on floodplain. I mean, I'm on board with that. I mean, it seems to me Dean Mandel was addressing that. But I'm also on board with this in terms of, you know, the infrastructure on, you know, on roads like Maple Hill, on roads like Brook Street, on roads like uh, Lower Bethel Mountain Road. And I mean, a, a large portion of 100 is, I don't, know, I don't know if a large portion, but it seems like um, that is floodplain and, as well. Right. So I want to call people's attention to that on um, June 11th, which is a Tuesday. And I think what, what they're interested, what Dan McKinley and the group is interested in is working groups. So I'm actually very interested in the road part of that. Right, you um, might want to check with yeah. Dan about that because yeah. my understanding is that's not an actual planning commission. Yeah, I don't think it is. That's yeah. an, uh, that's a okay. meeting of people who were in, who went to the previous right. meeting and are interested in, in the forming kind of working groups to work on specific projects. Well, I mean that's fine. All right, okay, I stand corrected, but actually it would be a good meeting for people to go to who want to be part of working groups to work on, you know, their goals. I mean, so. But I mean, but, but I'll be there. It seems that's a, that's a very good goal for, and I'm interested in that. So I guess it's not a planning commission meeting, but it's a mission. Not specifically. You know. okay. But I just want to, I guess he's going to be sending you a notice. And I said, you know, if you just write it and send it to you, I hope we'll imagine we're here in the next week. And I guess there's a meeting of the listers this Friday for people who, you know, have have some uh, grievance. Who, who want their who want, what is it called? Grievance. Grievance. It's, it is a grievance, right? Mm -hmm. No, I did see the notice at the post office, and I'm sure it was duly you know posted and blah blah mm -hmm. blah. But actually, uh, maybe maybe Mason uh, recording this um, will alert people to the fact that you know if they have suffered flood damage um, and you know feel that they the value of their property has been affected by this amount of water and God, you know, um, then they, they need to, you know, file a, file, a, file a grievance with the listers to get some kind of consideration for, you know, lowering the, um, you know, the, the assessed value, right? Okay, well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the uh, specifics and- Right. right. Thank you. Go no, come on, you see it. It happens. What do you call a storm? Yeah. I mean, maybe climate change is man-made, but- No, I was, I was surprised not to hear climate change in Vogue, too. No, I, think, I think we are in climate change. Yeah. And I have photos that would show that, yeah. 
No, August, you know, August 2008, August 2011. Here we are, 19. You can refer to it as active climate change. Active climate change, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Godless right. act of okay. climate change. Thank you, Frank. All right. I only got into a fight with one person. I apologize. Um, okay. So, um, I, I speaking of other people want to speak to discuss. speaking of, of roads, let's um, um, let's talk about Brook Street. <laughs> speaking of uh, yeah. man-made disasters, <laughs> yeah. They not want to yeah. speak about Brook Street. First of all, I want to thank the, the select board and, and the highway crew for whoever, Gopher and, or Cooter and his crew mm. for uh, changing all the speed limit signs. Mm. I mean, the next morning, before I got out of bed, Dick said they were changing the speed limit yeah. signs, which was fantastic, except that... Uh, people don't know how to read. Hopefully that's just the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yes, you're right, people don't know how to read. <laughs> They're just totally ignoring them. Yeah. But things have been happening up there that are getting really scary. Um, I know for a fact that yesterday there was a road rage incident, and Mike might want to speak to that in a minute. Um, I also heard that it wasn't me. No, <laughs> that uh, yeah. Sue Delmas and her daughter almost got clipped last night when a car went between them and the car they were talking to coming around the corner. Um, it's it's getting scary. I mean, it's really getting scary. Um, the Henry boys who are on the cottage right across from us mm -hmm. down the bay, they were up at the top of their property yesterday when they heard, they could hear the road rage incident going on up above. Um, and as I said, Mike can tell us more about that. Um, people are going around the barriers down here, driving up to the Jersey barriers and then turning around and coming back. Mm -hmm. I guess the signs don't apply to them. Um, I, I just wondered what the update was on, you said you were talking to Windsor County Sheriffs and Addison mm -hmm. County Sheriffs, mm -hmm. but there was an update for that. I did notice there's a nice, beautiful big sign over there that says 100 South to 107, but there needs to be something that says Interstate 89. People don't get it. This morning we were down on the park for the memorial service, and up through comes this, probably a 40-foot camper trailer that I think Noel and his dad stopped because they were going to head up Brook Street. Mm -hmm. No way in hell they could have made the corner yeah. up by Mrs. Kirkpatrick's going yeah, up there yeah. with that thing. Yeah. It, I mean, it's just, people just don't know where to go. They don't know where to go. And I, so I'm got, directing them as best I can. I know. Yeah, me too. Well, <laughs> they're, they're right out front of my house. Their GPS around. doesn't work. They're turning they're around into the old driveway. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's crazy. It's yeah. That's Go ahead, fine. Noel. I mean, they get up, they get up to that point. They're already committed. But mm -hmm. that sign that says you Route 100, mm -hmm. that should be down by the skid mark. Yeah, that should be down on Route 100, right. facing there, so they don't even turn up if they're yeah. trying to get over up to 89. It's just it's the location of it. Does that involve a train? Well, I know, but they don't. You know what I mean? And we couldn't turn the Saying interstate 89, we all have to pull in. Even if the barriers, those wooden barriers that are there, if they could be moved down by the Huntington House, at least that gives them the idea. Maybe we shouldn't be going this way, and they can go around the park in both directions. Because right now they're coming up there. Yesterday when I went down to the grocery store, a car came up, saw the barriers, and did a U-turn right in front of me. If I hadn't been paying attention, I'd have mm -hmm. hit the guy. Or he'd have hit me, one or the other. But it's just, they keep, yeah, they're getting it. It's them right on Bird Street. They get right, up there. They're, they're in a bottleneck right there. Yeah. They're in a bottleneck. They don't well, I suggested know. last meeting, you know, move the barriers down by the parsonage. You know, what it does, they get up to there and they got to go right up Brook Street. They ain't got no other choice or turn around right in the middle of the road. I've had to wait for people. Yeah. They don't slow down, they don't pull over. Right. Oh, these are all strangers and there needed to be some detour signs posted uh, coming over Bethel Mountain Road and or trying to go up Bethel Mountain Road. They should be detours. And it's only been about five signs. I have driven a lot of areas where I have to take detours. Mm -hmm. And it's no problem in telling people where they need to go. And if, regardless of what direction they're, they're headed in, whether it's a 40 foot temper trailer or otherwise uh, they need to know that there's a detour mm -hmm. and it's a red sign and yeah. 
some information under it would be helpful as far as you're going to 89 or if you're going to 100 north. And so it's a, a very simple thing. As far as the hollow is concerned, a detour should be, it could be in, entirely on a class two road. And even though uh, Mike McIntyre would say that maybe it, it, they won't go that way, which is up by, you know, uh, 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 Earl's place. And so that's all class two, you know, which is a higher grade road. That doesn't mean it's a better road, except that the traffic should be detoured onto class two road if possible. Right. You can't legally detour onto a lesser class road than what you're detouring from. That is from. Right. Federal, it, that is and since that's a federal road, they don't even want us to detour onto class two town roads. The, de no. the detour is... Well, this is all class two. Bethel Mountain Road it's is a federal class two. Road. And up no. by Earl Simpson is class two. It's a federal road. But what do you what, do no, 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 it's not right. Bethel Mountain is a federal road. That is not a federal road. That's who's paying for Federally subsidized class two. Three, nothing. That's a misnomer. It, it, well, it's well, a town road. They're paying the bills. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're yeah. not paying yeah. the bill. Yeah. But, I mean, but this, that's, that's regardless. That's regardless. The, the the detour needs to be down Route 100, and it needs to be at the other end of Camp Brook Road. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. the sign there. We're not no. necessarily. Well, you're, you're, yeah. Once you do a sign up on top of the mountain. And that's you know it, really the goal would be to stop people that don't know what's going on from even coming up of that course. way. Yeah. And we have mentioned yeah. this to be trans about signage on yeah. Route 100 and putting up signs on Route 100, and that that would involve V trans because it's a state highway. So we've we've spoken about it. This is a town issue. It's not yeah. a state highway issue. Even though the state highway, the state highway well, the well, detour will be on the state highway. Yeah. And the town detour is on the state highway. Does that mean that it's federal yeah. money? Does that mean that every house that FEMA helps is a federal home? It's, Come it's, on, no, let's no, get straight about calling yeah. this a town road. It's a town road. It's not a federal road. Yeah. Yeah. It's we're a road just, lately, and it's just not a federal road. Well, well, I, I don't know. I'd like to get the county to sign off on this and let us know what the that, that is the Bethel Mountain Road. It's it is not. It is what do you mean it's a federal road? Because of the next highway is federal. Well, that's different. Yeah. They're, not well, it, they're not maintaining it. No. The town is. No, but they're, right that's where they're, the bills so yeah, by their right. They're the ones that what are. What are their certain. rules with respect to that road? Well, it's really well, yeah. They, 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 they don't. They don't want to. It's under V trans. <laughs> it's, it's V trans. It's, it's, it's like it's under Chris Baldwin V trans. At Our this point, manager. Bethel Mountain Road is not my concern. Right, Brook we're talking. We were talking about Brook Street, right? <laughs> right. Which right. is because of what happened on Bethel Mountain Road. What happened yesterday? Yeah. With Debbie. Well, and I'm saying that people won't pull over. They're yeah. scared to death. They get up there on that road and they want to stay in the middle. Right. Yeah. Right. And Deb Turnbull almost got run into the ditch and she had to stop. And then she got to the people and they wouldn't. She said, just move over a foot so I can get through. And they would not move. And the Henry boys could hear them yelling at each other down at the cottage. Well, they were a little above the cottage. They were on the back mountain. the road yeah. right? They walked up to the yeah. Yeah. Damn. So they're screaming at each other. They're screaming at each other. They weren't. Well, they called them for me. Yeah. Well, well Friday, the Friday afternoon, there was a disabled out. car in the middle of the road <laughs> right. all day. Yes. All afternoon. We're not disagreeing. On the blacktop. <laughs> I, My question is, if this damage was up on Bethel Mountain itself, so there was no way to get through, what would you do to stop them from going through there? It's the you mean same up thing. higher up on the mountain? Yep, if it was up on the mountain so nobody could get through. Mm -hmm. How would they you would stop people? From, would they have to go all the way up off the mountain, turn around, come back down? There'd be some way to stop them, right? We still have to let the landowners get through. Yeah. Right. Still has yeah. to be. The people live the whole damn way up. Yeah, they do live the whole way up there. So it's signs just. Signs that light up, those digital signs, for Christ's sake. Put the damn thing up. I mean, how much can it cost? $35,000. How much are going to cost? You know, top yeah. of the state. They got them. What, they what they they don't. Where was your conversation? We have talked to them. No, we didn't have any.
What was your conversation with the sheriff? How about the one off uh, 73 there off the mountain? That's We're, sitting there. They it's still ongoing. There. Jesus, We've gotten um, <laughs> working on proposals from them. Did Mike come back in? Mike, didn't you say that Bethel guy wanted to come over here and control? Yeah, there was a constable who came by that said he would be, uh, he works for Bethel, but he said at one point he was interested in working with the top of Rochester. Oscar. Oh. Yeah, Oscar. yeah. Oscar. Yeah, Oscar. Oscar, But yeah. I would recommend, I understand you can't deviate from it to a lesser quality road, but what you could do without a detour, you could just put an advisory sign up that says, Bethel Mountain Road is closed, seek alternative route, put it at the intersection of our road, regardless of what, you know, the town, the, State can't control what you do at the intersection of the road. That's yours down there. So when they get to that intersection, they know that the road is closed instead of funneling off there, because it is just a funnel. I, I was down there yesterday. I'll bet you, you know, it's like 40 cars an hour coming oh, yeah. through there, and a percentage of them turn around right at the thing, and then they get up and they turn around on Cannon Drive, or they turn around mm -hmm. up at My Street. You know, they just, yeah. And then they panic when they see the dirt, and they back down the road, and it's just somebody's <laughs> going to get hit. Yeah. It's, uh, it is kind of a, a, a lot of traffic getting all over there. I think yeah. There was some sort of sign right at the bottom. They're not seeing it. I mean, Terry was up there today. I could hear him turning people around. <laughs> you know, well, I just guys look crazy. Yeah, but I mean, when that lady came up and you know, like, yeah, you gotta go somewhere else. So it's just. Okay. And there was a vehicle that tri that almost put Sue Moulton off in the ditch up by Mrs. Kirkpatrick yesterday. She was yeah. spitting fire when she came by my house last night. <laughs> yeah. So Can't you move the signs down to the, by the fire station? Right at the intersection of the state highway. I think they were moved, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. I, I gotta say, you guys, so I, I understand this problem, but it, welcome to my world. You know, we at the in the village uh, nook of Bethel Mountain Road have been dealing with rude drivers speeding. We have disabled people. We have children. You know, it. I'm glad that you're experiencing what it is. I'm not glad it's happened, and I understand you're a dirt road and you're a tall winding road, and that there's degradation of the road, but, you know, we, Bethel, I'm almost positive that part of the slope failure is to do with the heavy, big, extended, 18-wheeler uh, and more trucks that are coming down there. A few weeks ago, I had, a, I had a truck as tall as my house and as long as my house sitting in front of my house for five hours. I said, why are you here? He said, well, he had a problem coming down the mountain. I said, why are you using the mountain road? My GPS directed me here. Mm -hmm. The one who took the guardrail out in front of the Smith's place, my GPS, GPS directed me. Yeah. They don't want to come down this road. Why is it that the, that the combined select boards of Bethel and Rochester can't get it together to say no truck traffic comes through this way, period? Joe was amazed on his way back from work to find 18 wheelers still coming down mm -hmm. Bethel Mountain Road, even though the road is closed. And Ann Mills said they were they came by her house the other day. About 20 minutes later, they went back up by her house. They're not paying for our slope failure, you know. It's just that they they don't belong in the road. If there's a runaway truck, there's no place for it to run into it for somebody's house. I mean, get real here. It's not just a Brook Street problem. So. Well, what's here on Blacktop is two lane road. Brook Street is narrow. I understand mm -hmm. that. Brook Street is not suitable for this road. But, no. but I'm just saying the, the houses on the Bethel Mountain Road are built in the 1800s. It's a narrow road. And <laughs> you know, it, they're not appropriate coming down there either. You know, we've we've had mothers with Multiple. young children in tow just trying to cross that street and not even being allowed by traffic to get to the other side, having to wait in the center of the road for cars to come up. I have been sitting there in my driveway waiting for Erna in her wheelchair to cross. They, two cars just boom, 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 right past me. They don't care if there's a handicapped person in a wheelchair crossing. This is what we're dealing with. So I mean, it is a culture. There. It's a cultural issue about cars. Yeah. And I think signs are great, but everybody's following their GPSs like robots. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I really believe is, we yeah. have to get through to we GPS. We have repeatedly been in touch with GPS companies. Tom Tom, 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 Tom is one of Tom has been up there twice because I've seen him. And they keep saying, yes, we'll we'll make note of it, and it doesn't happen. I checked happen. mine this weekend just to see, and it still doesn't say that that road is closed. I put in an address in Randolph to go from my place just the other day, and it, the GPS on my phone sent me up over Mel Cushman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm sure we'll be hearing from those people 
until next. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've had cars up on the snowmobile track. Yeah. 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 But, oh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no. it, it is. I mean, well, yeah, like, well, like I said, people can't read anymore. They, they just follow their little sign, death by GPS. Yeah. As a realtor, yeah. I have been sent up roads that don't exist. Okay, this is yeah. where I'm supposed to go. So I, it's it's an issue. It's not an exact science GPS. The fact remains, somebody's going to get hurt up on Brook Street. Yeah. 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 School's about two weeks. Well, the road was graded, and now it needs to be graded again. I mean, oh, just yeah. the, you know, it's just it's not suitable for no, because when they, every time they grade it, they go faster. Yeah, it's almost you can leave it, leave it full of potholes to slow everybody down. In the back there, hello. Um, first of all, I'd like to support Catherine because I've lived on Bethel Mountain Road, and I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. What goes on in that road? It's always been a, an extremely busy road, and cars go down. And I love the smell of uh, the asphalt uh, brake pads. Yeah. Yeah, I just wash it all in my house. It's always cool. special. <laughs> yeah. Always special. I just wanted to circle around in regards to Brook Road, and I feel your pain. I'd also like you to be considering the fact that back on Maple Hill, because of the ditch that it has broadened so much, there are times that two cars is difficult in passing. And it becomes a safety issue there. And I'd like you to reduce the uh, uh, speed there also. I think we're at 30. People fly at 40 and 45. And I wish that you would track the amount of traffic that goes up and down that road also. Um, we're probably almost as close to what's going on a little bit at, at Brook Road, um, the <laughs> situation there. You don't think so? No. no. They're, going, they're going by my house going 50 going down on that dirt road. They're going by my house at 50 too. Yeah. Coming down. All the time. All the heavy equipment. And my other concern will be what is going to happen when they start logging because I believe that is going to happen soon and from the forestry and maybe you guys know more on this. We'll be using um, Maple Hill to bring the logging trucks down because that will be starting I believe at some time. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, not this year, but not next year. I mean, next year. Um, next year. About one more year from now. One more year? Okay. Yeah. Um, circling around again, the act of God. You're going to hate that you've said that. <laughs> <laughs> because the act of God uh, can be used at times, and certainly what's going on in Oklahoma is an act of God. Yeah. Can't use that term if, unless. Um, if you are not having reasonable care being provided at the time, and I'll just do what Frank had said also about the care on the road, the culverts, whatever needs to happen, was not happening. And as a result right now, um, you know, I'm up about $500 on my costs for the repairs, and it just keeps on coming. I walked down the back of my property today and worked and worked in the back because all of the water from the road, from the top of the road, went down and went down through Doug Billings' property into my property all yeah. the way down a full acre of land. So that is a, that's a pretty good force of water that, that was being yeah. jettisoned down there. So consider number one, reducing the speed until you get that road repaired. Number two, I'm hoping that the ditch carriers, when I back out of my yard now, I could be <coughs> in the ditch two people going at the same time. If somebody pulls over, you have to be careful because of the size of the ditch that's there now. Um, I don't have an answer for, I'm not a uh, road engineer, how it needs to be fixed, but I do know that um, it, things could have been better. So I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the engineers want the ditches to be that big. Yeah. They want the water to dissipate over a larger area rather mm -hmm. than funnel into a V. And they want the water to go down into the ground where it will be filtered for removing phosphorus so that when it reemerges somewhere else, it's clean water. It's all part of what, we, what the legislature voted on. Um, we have heard it long before the April 15th event from other town, other like town line road, we've heard it from mm -hmm. other people. 
when we go through and we do a, a ditching that conforms to the Stormwater Act and the Clean Water Act, everyone goes, wow. <laughs> They're six foot deep, six foot wide. Well, Patty, what she's talking about, the ditch is much wider than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And that will be coming out the bit to fix that shoulder. Yeah. From mine. And, and it'll still have a big ditch, though. <laughs> You lost it through the road in some areas. Yeah. You know, it's beyond just a ditch. I'm, I'm not too sure what ditch you are talking about, but I'm mm. talking about a gully at the moment. So. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. We're yeah. going to fix that. Yeah. And it's going to work a bit very shortly. Good. Um, we're back on the speed limits. We can lower the speed limit to five miles an hour, and unless we have enforcement. It's not going to do anything. Right. Yeah. Right. So we can always we can talk about lowering the speed limits, lowering the speed limits, lowering the speed limits, unless we have somebody here with a radar gun and a badge mm -hmm. writing tickets. Yep. It's not going to do anything. Yep. I don't know if we. I know we're, you had we're, mentioned we're trying to get headed that in. way. Yeah. You know, we've got some paperwork <coughs> in hand to. You know, I can't give you a date when they're right. going to show up, but we have been, been, you know, headed that way. Yeah. Is, is it enforceable? Hmm? Is it enforceable? No. Which the this, the, speed the lowered limit? speed limits the on Brook Street right. are not enforceable right, right now because we just put signs up. We didn't. We haven't gone through the process of I of, of, of technically right. lowering it, but we okay. just put those up to try and just, some people down. You know, yeah. some people read <laughs> still. Oh, right now they're right now they're still legally thirty miles an hour. Yeah. So right. what is so, the process? Yeah. Well, we yeah, exactly. Like yeah. when we we yeah. have to notice it for yeah. thirty days, yeah. we have to have a public meeting, yeah. and then yeah. yeah. Um, um, there's a, you know. Do you have that speed part? Could you put one of those up at the? Part we do there? have that. We're researching whether it, um, well, part of the road. Where and you know, where do you put it? But if we um, <laughs> if we can um. um it's still unclear whether um, we can legally deploy that not being law enforcement officers ourselves. That's, um, that's, that's what we've been told. Yeah. You, you can't post below 25 miles an hour when you go to court. It has to be 25 in Vermont. That's the lowest speed that you can post when you yeah. do that. But, um, I don't, I don't think we need to do that. I think you can just put it up as an advisory thing. Just yeah. to help slow I, the I, I, I agree. People. That's yeah. really what the issue is, not to sound like we're hurting, but they don't know what they're doing. They see the dirt and they can speed up, and you know, maybe that would slow people down. Yeah. Didn't, didn't you tell me that we had speed bumps coming? Yeah, did we order some, right? I thought you were going on. There's a little bit of thought about yeah. where, where the, con the constable or the sheriff would be uh, parking and pulling people over that would not create a problem in itself. So um, they would, they're going to be at one end of the road or up at the top, and they're, they're probably not going to be pulling cars over right where you want them to be pulling cars over, because that will create yet another safety hazard. So that when we get, when we get there, Part of the cruiser on the Henry's driveway, they said you could. Right. Okay. But if he pulls over, if he pulls out to pull someone over, you know, he has to be on the road. Right? Well, we do. We can pull the truck out any time. I mean, you had said just a minute ago that you were working on getting a constable, and at last select board meeting, you said you had a meeting set the day. The day yeah. After. So yeah, and we got a bunch of information there. So you, but yeah. you haven't like been able to do anything definitely. Not me. not yet, but we're um, we're waiting on some more um, information. So yeah. what, you, what you're looking into is not just for Brook Street, but for the whole town. You're right, right, yes. the whole town. Yes. Yeah. Okay, with Windsor County Sheriff's Department. Possibly. Okay, yeah. thank you. I think the big thing, if you can get these people that are driving through, yeah, to, you know, right. cut that back, it'd be a big help. Yeah. And the only it thing on be. the Bethel slide, it says road closed eight miles ahead. Eight miles yeah. ahead, right. Yeah. They're still coming. Yeah. Although Camp uh, Bethel did decide to keep Camp Book closed as long as our section is closed. Yeah, so that was a plus. Well, we, 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 we don't say anything over there. 
Oh, I know that. I know that. Yeah. Oh, no trucks, no through trucks on the Bethel side. I mean, well, we can't do anything on the Bethel side. No, I mean, the select board's got, got to get together. Like they did a long time ago. Marvin yeah. and I were at that joint Bethel meeting, and they made decisions about road signs. They decided to post weight limits. Why not post no through truck? I mean, you've got to, you should get a permit if you're, if you're taking a truck that exceeds the weight limit. You know, I, 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 yeah. there should be permitting processes through the select boards. Really, truly, the, yeah. it's not a good idea to, I know we have to bring the logging trucks, but for that to be a root of the 18 wheelers, it shouldn't be. No, it be. shouldn't be. It, it should not yeah. be. Not unless you want another slope failure down the road. I'll say something when the camera's off. <laughs> <laughs> so, more signs, more enforcement. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you move the signs down so they're not right there to stop? I don't know if it's moving them as more as maybe additional signs would be better because like Cooter said people come around I see a lot of people their GPS obviously coming from the south they turn at the park house they go around the park because the yeah. GPS is always like oh that's the first place right. to turn so if you, you know you have to but if it's by know. the person it just should stop them from getting to Berkshire you well, would stopped, think there's three people stopped me on the way when I was walking down the hill yesterday saying their GPS was broken and wasn't working and they didn't know where they were going and I'm like hey, yeah. Well, you're on the wrong road. No. But yeah, no. so it's, it's happening on a regular basis. I'm wondering no. if we shouldn't actually even have some sort of informational thing right there because people are stopped, stymied their GP. People don't use maps anymore for some reason. Yeah. I, they yeah. Yeah. Maps, yeah. You know, so I mean, but they need mm -hmm. something informationally to be able to actually know where to go. So we're like telling them, but I'm thinking about just doing a handout oh. now. <laughs> you know, go down through 100, Black Bear 107, mm -hmm. to get to the I, you know, it yeah. is many, many times a day. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've been painting the house and stopping every few seconds to read a record. I don't think they want them going on Black Market. That's slopes coming away, too. It is, yeah. Yeah, well, I hadn't heard about Probably that. Probably because of increased traffic. Right now, I think there's only two miles difference between one up around Black Market. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. They're, on the they're going to the interstate. Yeah. And it, but it's quicker to go down the main, main road. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you can slow them down. If you can slow them down. <laughs> yeah. I, would, I tell you what, probably 75% of the cars that are going by our house are from out of state. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can just see them. They just turn at Skip Mart yeah. and yeah. go. I see it. Yeah. What I'd like to see is leave the wooden barriers where they are there at the foot of, of Bethel Mountain. Put up a couple more barriers by the Huntington House, by the minister saying no through traffic, locals only. Read signs, people. But they don't. They don't. I was up in the <laughs> So what 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 would what that, would be the local only? Everyone that lives in the hollows, but that's that's, 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 that's that's that would cut me off from using the no, 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 no. You're not going to somewhere other than You're not going over okay. the mountain to go to the interstate. So not local to Brook Street. Just not local to I just, I just want to have clarity because yeah. I take dump road as much as possible. Yeah. Well, I know everybody's and I was gone for the whole weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just been going through the Gulf to get up north. <laughs> It does say on uh, 511, the first thing that comes up is Bethel Mountain Road is closed. That's free trans. Yep, that's the state of Vermont, 511. Well, that's the yep. do mm -hmm. also. Oh, that's, that doesn't inter that doesn't transfer over to the GPS, I don't believe. Unfortunately. Yeah. So we haven't cracked that one, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That's we fine. Fine. Well, you see, the, you see them here, okay. and yeah. where they go after this, they come and they look at it, and then they're gone. It well, doesn't happen. The truckers don't want to go over the Bethel Mount Road. No. It's terrifying no. to them coming down that road. Oh, yeah. It's like we really have to figure this out. I'm happy to be a part of, you know, give me a job and I'll mm -hmm. take it, you know, but we got to figure out this GPS thing, how to communicate with them. Well, Patty, I, before Bethel Mountain Road was damaged, you know, we put in just fairly recently, within the last year, a really nice sign that definitely says to the left, Rochester at that T intersection there and everything. It's very, very clear. 
but you would be, I know people up in the hollows told me how many out-of-state people have said to them, well, their GPS told them to go that way. Yeah. 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 And they ask him, didn't you see the sign with the arrow to the left? No. <laughs> but my GPS said. My GPS says, yeah. yeah. I don't believe the sign. The other thing is that this sign is that your GPS is wrong. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's an unfortunate yeah. situation that we, we really did not create. And we're really trying to get everything yeah. done, and we're trying to get this boat prepared before the snow flies. I wish it were and one so way. And so we are fast tracking right everything we can. I know but maybe that's the answer to make it a one way road. Right. On what street. Street. You can barely pass anyway, and if you get the other people, maybe you just make it one way down the hill. No, that's not fair with the You're people that live on it. Well, I mean, you know, we well, don't even handle that with fire and rescue people. That's just one way. Well, obviously. four and a half months. Yeah, yeah right. So, no, but we want it to be improved because my concern is when we up, upgrade the bottom of Bethel Mountain Road, it's I mean, part of our part of our um, leverage to try and keep trucks off of that was because of we had lowered the weight limit because of the failing slope. Now, if that all gets upgraded and fixed, like remember when they did the top of Bethel Mountain Road, they didn't send many trucks over that when that was dirt road up there. Um, but I'm, we really have to have our, our stuff in line so when that road does get reopened, it doesn't open up a flood of, of heavier traffic It's going on the to be road. a 24,000 pound road again, Bethel yeah. Mountain. Yeah. So it's posted on both sides. Of the road. At 24. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. had dropped it to 18. Mm -hmm. 24, that's a dump truck. Basically. It's an empty yeah. dump truck. An empty dump truck. Not a full yeah. one. Yeah. 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 But you know, still not something that loaded semi should be over. But they they don't right. pay There's attention no to those signs. There's no runaway truck thing. I mean, it's just not appropriate for them. I mean, yeah, yeah. And I that's don't not care even. I mean, church no. yard. And <laughs> the church is there. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 All right. Church. Well, <laughs> well, thank you. Enough, thank you for lose their brakes. You yeah. Know, oh, yeah. And come down not knowing what to do and literally going into the park. Yeah. You know, really, mm -hmm. truly, it's just not a place for them. And they agree. We've, oh, no, they don't want to do it. I've seen coffee and soup out to them. Yeah. yeah. I would like to thank the select board for taking all this heat. Shoulders <laughs> 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 are getting bigger over there. No, no. <laughs> you didn't thank ask you. for this. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. No, and, and I don't want it. it the best you can. Well, it's um, we hope I to can. handle it even better. I mean, I don't know how many trucks I've taken pictures of their license plates and, and got on the phone on the and call the their company and yeah. you know and try. You know, I don't know if it helps at all, but it's um, yeah. you know. It's, uh, well, the, the last time we had the meeting, um, we signed whatever for the second phase. What has like, um, been done with we're, the We're phase. in it and waiting. I mean, usually yeah. what takes a three to four month process for engineering, we've got them down to doing it in six weeks. Got to have it. Yeah. And then we've already put an alert into major construction companies, a, a kind of like a save the date letter, mm -hmm. um, that we're coming at them and we want this done this year. Um, so everything is being fast tracked. Everything's being shortened. And it's it's going to be back together by October fifteenth. I hope. <laughs> yeah, right, right, Frank. We hope. From your mouth to God's ear. Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, Dick. I just thank you for taking on all the complaints and whatever. I, I just wanted. I mean, j just the meetings. I'm aware that you are at. I mean, it's just an you know, emergency meeting here, emergency meeting there. I mean, it's just. I mean, the, 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 the amount of time you're spending just on, on all this issue relating to this one storm. I mean, it's just... Uh, it's a lot. I mean, it's just, it is a lot. you know, yeah. thank you. And, well, thank you. Um, thank it, God it wasn't I mean, the stuff I know season. you're doing is mm. just... Yeah. Well, it's Frank, you've been on the school board, so you know that some, there, there no, are no, times I actually, when it happens. I, I actually, I actually <laughs> volunteered for the school board. I don't think I would volunteer for the school board. I don't know. Yeah. Mac, I'd yeah. say. You know, it is this one storm, but I've been living where I've been living since 1993, yeah. and only twice 
have I seen the Brook in My Backyard top expense. Mm -hmm. That was with Irene mm -hmm. and this recent storm. Mm -hmm. Now, with Irene, we know it not only topped its bank, it yeah. peeled the land away like, yeah. like an orange yeah. peel. Yeah. But it, it topped, it topped, and we yeah. have boulders now that we never had before. Yeah. Yeah. So the riprap got washed down. Yeah. You know, it's, this was a storm, but it was also the combination of velocity and volume and the whole thing. And it could happen again. Yeah, it probably will. It's yeah. only the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because so so with respect, right. respect to any you know and and I know I'm not telling you anything but the idea that as we go through repair mode that we also look to the future expecting these kind of events right well that's why we choose to upgrade even though FEMA will only pay to replace what was there we take the next step further and try and upsize the culverts and, and bridges what have you. Yeah, just because you have to. It's stupid right. to just put back what was there. That's your yeah. tax dollars at work. Yeah. Um, and Irene, you know, there was a lot of different priorities. We had we had people that didn't go back to the same pillow the next day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People that lost their houses during Irene. So we did just slap Bethel Mountain Road back together because we had other priorities going on in this town that were that touched human beings much closer. Um, this time, thank God, we have done something right. This time we did not lose any houses. Everyone, everyone went back to their same pillow the next day. So we are now able to concentrate our efforts on Bethel Mountain Road. It's time to fix that road. And we're all going to make some type of sacrifice. And it's, hopefully it's going to be worth it at the end. Um, you know, the road is not going to look a whole lot different than it does now, but underneath the drainage yeah, system yeah. will be an engineered drainage yeah. system that will probably take it. I, you know, it's not going to be like an interstate concrete wall or anything like that. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look fairly similar, maybe a little bit wider. But uh, it's, it's what happens under the road that needs street. to be it's fixed. It can't be wider down where it is now. <laughs> no, it no, can't. No, no, it can't be. In our living room. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It was yeah. hot there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, it but it's what's right? happening underneath the road that we just have to strip all of that out and start over with something yeah. that's new, mm -hmm. exciting, and yeah. working. Uh, Martha? It would also be nice if coming down into the village, the guardrail on the side of the drop off there was a little higher than that's it did all, in the last yeah. years. Yeah, that's a result of the road. Oh, I know, I know. Up and up and <laughs> there up. There were times this winter when I thought, hey, so nobody else is coming in the other lane. You no. Because I was afraid I was going to go off the side. So, yes, and I realized that's a result of that. But no. since you're fixing it, if you could maybe make the guardrail a little higher for people like me who are a little nervous about it. Well, speaking Thank of you. guardrails, Harlan, you know what happened to the guardrail out um, <laughs> the beginning yeah, of bingo? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what happened with that? Uh, I heard somebody from Connecticut was going a little bit too fast. <laughs> yeah, That's okay. That's what I heard. Sounds logical. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are they going to do? Are they going to throw a guardrail up there? They had a nice bridge there at one time. Are they going to, I'm sure it was an accident like that, that the insurance company, the person that did it, would be liable to repair the bridge, correct? Yeah, you would hope so. Yep. I mean, so... They just going to slap a band-aid guardrail there, or they're going to put it back the way it was. It got any I don't know. I, was, I, I just noticed it the other day. I was curious. Yeah, I don't know yeah. when it happened. I noticed it. Yeah. But is that it happened in the winter time? No, no, no. this happened um, just, just recently. A week ago, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah there Saturday was somebody. Night, Sunday morning. Saturday night. Okay. Very early Saturday. So, um, plenty to do on the roads. Does anybody have else have anything they want to say about about that for now? Just, um, hopefully, we'll give you more reading material in the form of signage, and we'll. I'd like to know more it. clarified information about. Bethel Mountain Road being a federally assisted road and what the implications of that are for people living on that road, we need to know. And and I just heard from the select board that we don't really fully know, so I want to fully know. I know that the designation was uh, provided when they decided uh, appropriate to connect the two roads 
um, back on the top. The, on yeah. The top. yeah, on the top. Yeah, and, and that's um, what triggered it. It had to do with emergency services, and each end was on a state highway, so mm -hmm. it was connecting two state highways, and the emergency services for our whole valley came over that way. So the feds decided to take on the road as a, a subsidized road, and they are the ones that did the connection at the top, correct? The feds? Well, actually, it was 100 years before that. Wow. And it was a federal highway. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was the only federal highway in this area. Okay. And, so and I got to go back further. Early, in the mid-1800s. I have to go back it further. It goes way back. Okay. Yeah, this is old. Mm -hmm. Now, wasn't there a talk at one time of right making that a state road? It will be talked again. And, and, <laughs> yeah, either, but it really either it talked about making it an extension of Route yep. 66. Route 60, yeah. An extension of Route 66. It will be. From Randolph yep. across. You can remember that. Route 66 you're looking at. <laughs> I remember you talking about that for a long time, but, but no, it, it isn't the state that maintains the road. It's, you know, they don't, they don't come down there and do anything, you know? No, but they, but subs is, they subsidize us to maintain it. We and it, money and, from it's, the state. Yeah. and it's federal money that's doing the repair now. But do yeah. they, it's federal money paid for our plowing and our sanding and our labor? Yep. We do it, but the state we do it, but we get subsidized. We get subsidized. Through the state. Yeah. Every mile of our roads in our town. Okay, yeah. so that's all of our roads. Yeah. No. Well, that's no. No. There's only the there's class two road. Yeah. Get class much, two. And yeah. class three yeah. road get a much and lower class, amount. Class four yeah. that aren't maintained yeah. don't get it. Right. I understand that, but I'm saying very specifically about that road. Is it really treated any different in terms of, you know, money from the Well, state? it sure is getting treated is right different now. now. Yeah. 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 But, but we do. We get a higher reimbursement for that than we do on, say, the dirt roads. It's it's proportional. Now, is that higher than the other, other Class two roads? I'm not sure about that. That's but it, it, it yeah. may be. I don't know. Do you know, yeah. Cooter? That's, no. But... Um, We'll um, try and find some more concrete information for that for you. Yeah. I don't know. What is Bird Street? No, that's Class 3. The Class 3 information yeah. we get from BDRAS, yeah. the annual budgets we do, the rate that they give us for each one of the classes we just on there. Yeah. Is it North Hollow Road Class 2? Huh? North Hollow is class two. Right? North Hollow is all class two, all the way to the Granville town line and the Route 100 down the corridor. Road. All class two. So why don't they send them on the class two road? There's a couple more on that road, actually. Yeah. So people are going around. Then yeah. Mike Bowen will be down here complaining. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> no, he's too busy. Local traffic, yeah. Del Marsh Road only. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep moving so, it off uh, somewhere else. <laughs> Can they stop at your house? Well, yep. certainly if they're going to Middlebury, it makes it sense to go around the North Hollow Road. Yeah. So, but they probably don't. A lot of them probably don't. Oh, yeah. I was in a kind of like a funny conversation mm -hmm. today. 13 minutes more. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, when my office is at the intersection of 100, 107 in Stockbridge, and I went through it for months and months and months after I ran, because one. 07 was closed. Nobody knew where to go. So I've been there too. Yeah. So Joan, you mentioned about the um, our annual road um, agreement with the state. That's a good segue into your yes. updates. If everyone else is done talking about Brook Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Uh, let me stand up. Uh, how long? Um, so first, uh, I can give you an update. Everyone, an update on the status of the FEMA uh, declaration. Mm -hmm. um, Vermont will, or if they haven't already, they'll be making the declaration request to FEMA by the end of the month, uh, May 31st. Okay. That's the state asking the feds to designate this as a federal disaster area. Um, and still, then the state, the, the feds have to agree and issue a declaration. And the anticipated approval, assuming they do approve it, but everyone's expecting that they will, uh, would be by late July. We would suggest it could happen sooner, but late July is what they're saying is the you know, outside date. Forgetting that. Um, meanwhile, they 
highly recommend that we do the permanent repair work needed on the roads that would qualify for people funding, assuming we get it. And Cooter's been doing that already. Um, just so you know that it's highly recommended that we do it and not wait until we know whether there is a FEMA declaration or not. Um, and that there, we know already about all the documentation that's required for FEMA projects. And in addition, making sure we follow the, follow the proper procedures if we're hiring contractors to do any of the work. It's the stuff you've been through yeah. already before, so you know that, but it's a good reminder anyway. And uh, also a reminder that it's a reimbursement program which means that we spend the money and then wait for the feds to send the money through to the state and then to us for reimbursement for all the work. And that can take up to a year. So it's going to have an impact, obviously, on our budget, at least on a short-term basis. Uh, we should plan for that. Um, then there's the status of the Federal Highway Administration, which is the one that is funding, hopefully, our work on Bethel Mountain Road, the lower part of it, and parts of the upper as well. And Chris Baum did, uh, from our District 4 VTRANS office, did a site visit with the highway folks on the 13th of May, that was two Mondays ago. Um, and there was agreement that not only should we be repairing the road, but we should be upgrading it to higher standards. Yeah. So that in the future, it's kind of obvious, but it wasn't given that they would agree with that. But once apparently the people were on site, saw the amount of the damage and the kind of damage and how it occurred and why it occurred and got all the history behind it, they agreed that it should be a full upgrade to a higher standard than what it has been up till now. Um, they didn't make any, didn't reach any agreement on the dollar amount yet because they have to have the, everyone needs to have the uh, plans completed by our um, engineers so we know what the cost is. The estimates that we have so far, as you know already, is somewhere close to a million dollars. Yeah. Excuse me, Joey, I didn't hear who Chris Bum of VTrans met with. Was it the same person, a person from the federal from highway? From the federal highway, okay, thank you. Right. Yeah, I don't have a name for you. And so what we're waiting for is for Du Bois and Kane, who is our engineer on uh, designing the, the rebuild on Bethel Mountain Road and the lower part of it, is um, they have completed what they're calling conceptual plans. It's a 35-page document, which I have, but I didn't bring because it's highly technical. And quite frankly, I don't know how to read it. Um, but we have an engineer who is representing the town, as well as working with all the other engineers involved to uh, make comments on it. The comments have gone back to Du Bois and King. So within possibly this week, we will have a final conceptual plan from Du Bois and King. And then once they have an accepted conceptual plan, they'll be able to do a full cost estimate so we have a better idea of what the rebuild is going to cost. And then we will hear back from the Federal Highway Administration within some period of time, I don't know what that is, uh, approving the amount. Uh, but the number that has been thrown out to them is been somewhere around 900,000. So that's what everybody's hoping for. So we considered on track with the Boy and King scheduling? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, the completion date for, for the contract for the conceptual plans was at least the 31st of this mm -hmm. month. So they're on track for that because they've gotten comments back and they're working Perfect. now to have them fully completed. Um, and apropos of that, I have an amendment to Du Bois and King's contract to sign. Um, this is, we gave them an email message last week letting them know that they could proceed with tasks three and four, which is the main part of the design work. And now they're asking us to sign a, an amendment to the contract, uh, which puts it on paper. In addition, there's a little bit of extra work that they're, they've been asked to do as a result of the comments they've received to the conceptual plans. And that's attached, but you need to sign that because that's going to be a subcontract yep. with Du Bois and King. They're going to be doing, they being Sanborn and Head, who's the uh, technical engineers, geotechnical engineers, um, have to do about $2,200 worth of work to take a look at the underlayment and the paving itself to see whether that's part of the problem and whether it should be upgraded as part of the overall project. Um, they might be doing another $2,500, depending upon what they find. Okay. But we'll know that yeah. as, it, as it comes to pass. Um, so the estimated date for Du Bois and King to have completed the design work and provided us with an estimate of the cost is 
Well, and then for us to be ready to go out to bid to a construction company is mid-June. I don't have an exact date in the contract, but it's about June 15th, plus or minus. Can I just ask the scope of, I mean, how is it the entire Bethel Mountain Road, or is it's, it just the lower part? It's the lower part. Um, that's what Du Bois and Kings is working on. That's what they're contracted to do. And but so there where is, is from where to where is the lower part? Um, where the barriers are up above, uh -huh. down to where the barrier is now, the bottom. Okay. It's considered lower Bethel Mountain Road. Yeah. And 20, then there's 20, also 2,500 feet. And, right, 2,500 feet. It's the steepest part of it. Yeah. yeah. Above that, there's also two sections of what we're calling upper Bethel, upper lower Bethel Mountain Road. <laughs> upper That's lower. That's confusing. It is. But Hooter has it all under control in terms of where these projects are. There are other more discrete sites in the upper part that need to be repairs as well. And what we're expecting, though we don't have final approval yet, but what has been proposed by DTRANS is that those discrete areas on the upper part that got damaged in the same storm will be included in the funding that's received from the federal government. Joan, what, I was, I was kind of, you received a 35 page report that was the conceptual. It's the conce first draft of the conceptual plan. And you said you couldn't understand was there a like lot to of, see it. Was there, <laughs> was there a lot of differential <laughs> equations? No, yeah, no, but yes. But oh, really? Yes. Okay. But Drawings, well. sketches that, uh, first of all, they're, you know, the type is about this big. Um, but also, it's, it's highly technical stuff. So that's why the town has cricket. an engineer that represents us. Mm -hmm. That's Cricket. Yeah. And, she, you know, I was in touch with her over the weekend, yeah. as a matter of fact, to make sure that she had read it. She, she sent uh, forwarded to me a copy of her comments, and Chris Bump also forwarded it to us a copy of his comments going back to Du Bois and King. So I think in our position, you know, we rely on these folks to advise us yeah. and tell us, you know, whether this is good or whether it needs to be revised and why and so on, and we trust them to do that. And Du Bois and King is doing a fantastic job as well. Yeah. So. Um, there's a certain amount of trust in that. Oh, brave in a world that has such reports in it, I guess, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so anyway, mid-June is when we're expecting to be going out to bid to a uh, construction company. And it has, it's been discussed before, so the select board knows this, but so you know as well. It's going to be, there may be two or three or four of the most contractors that are considered of the appropriate size to be able to do a project, not just because of the scope of work, which is, you know, not out of, out of line totally with things that VTrans has done in the past. But the issue is that in order for the town to get fully reimbursed 100% by the federal government for this work, we have to have it completed by October 15th. And not very many construction companies have, you know, enough people yeah. available to be able to do that. So that'll be a for a very formal bidding process, going out to you know a specific number of contractors who can handle the work and get it done on time. Um, so that's what's coming up next. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, the upper. There's some other Bethel Mountain Road projects, um, and uh, Cooter's been working on them with some assistance from Cricket as well in terms of putting the specs together. There will be uh, a bid advertisement in the Herald, and also going out to some, you know, it'll also be sent to local contractors, letting them know that this work is available. So far, it's three projects, two of them on Upper Bethel Mountain Road, and one on Maple Hill, and more to follow. Uh, so we'll keep the bidding process going on that, advertising and bidding. And so you should know that um, bids for those three projects have to be received uh, by <coughs> June 10th, and that's your next select board meeting, and we'll be opening bids at that time for those mm -hmm. three projects. Um, so moving on to other stuff, um, we need a vote uh, from, by the select board for Dune to sign the subgrant agreement with Vermont Huts Association, mm -hmm. um, which will be a subgrant to the town, subgrant agreement with the town, and then we in turn have a subgrant agreement with Two Rivers to manage the Bellamont grant. Right. So um, we need an opinion letter in order to sign the contract, the uh, grant agreement, and in order to have that signed. Um, Martha. We need a letter of opinion from the attorney, and the attorney has asked for 
Mike had a question about the VACD stands for. What does VACD stand for? Vermont Agency of Community Development. Thank you. Community Development. This is where the grant is coming from for the Delamar project. Um, speaking of grants, are we still pursuing that original grant for engineering for Bethlehem? Oh, uh, that's for the main <coughs> pushman. 45,000? It's not for engineering, it's for construction. We already oh. have. We already have the design done. That was last year's grant. And we haven't heard from VTrans yet. Okay. And I haven't really asked them because I figure <laughs> they're, busy. they're a little busy. Yeah. But at some point, they have to let us they're know whether busy. that grant has been approved. Because um, we do have the funding for doing the construction on it. So, Hopefully Patty, do you want to move to um, authorize me to sign this? I second it. Or if you move it, I'll second it. it. Okay. Right. So, so moved. Right. So moved. Okay. We're right. moving. Right. Okay. That was so moved. All right. What are you moving? Yeah. No, you can't. John, bless you. Keeping this in your hand. Yes. No, I'm not. We got no. Okay. Um, next project: um, the wastewater bond information. Uh, that project is all done. Uh, that was last year's project. Uh, but we have a slightly revised payment schedule that we need you to sign. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, in reference to the Bell mm -hmm. and the grant zone, uh, do we have a carbon footprint uh, evaluation on this project? Carbon footprint yeah. evaluation? Yeah, because this is just for design. What? Yeah. The this whole project, like we're talking about the increase of traffic, a whole bunch of um, things that relate to our new world that it seems like we just spent two hours perfect. talking about. I'd like to see a carbon footprint about all this new development. This is just a design. I, let me let me finish. Let me, fine. May I finish? May I finish? This is just a design, and when it goes to the next level, which is implementation, they have to go through an Act 250 process. And so I think that's where your questions about that can be addressed. And we did have a meeting with these folks last year. They came in and did an mm -hmm. informational presentation with us last year. So a lot of the Velamont people. A nonprofit? Yeah. The, 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 the nonprofit organization? Yes. That was uh, actually August 27th, 2018. What's this Velamont? is the concept of a recreational trail right now reaching ah. from um, Killington to Stowe that would connect existing oh, trail right. networks yeah. on the way and um, possibly eventually the whole length of the state. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I've read an article. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So just a little summary for that uh, in case you've forgotten. Um, the bond that was voted uh, by the town was for $505,000, which is pretty much what we spent on the wastewater upgrade, mm -hmm. site one and three. We, and the amount that was forgiven um, was 242500 So our actual loan that we have to repay is just about a little more than half of that. It's $262,000. About what we thought, right? Yeah. And it's a 20-year loan at a very low interest rate. And it's a fixed payment, one payment a year of uh, where's the total payment? $16,053.64 is what we're paid this year. So there was a slight recalculation based on the final numbers for the project. Yeah. So if you could just sign there, I can send it back to them and they will notify us when, I think debt service is supposed to start in September, I believe it is. Part of the Bellamont Agreement does have an environmental review that will be required to be done. And that's part of the and I'm sure that the carbon process. footprint will be part of that. And that goes back to you now, right? Yeah, so I can send that to the attorney. Thank you. And then last but not least is the stormwater project at the town garage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we agreed that uh, White River Partnership would actually manage that contract, one last thing for the town to, to deal with. 
So they're negotiating that now with the same consultants who worked with before, um, uh, Watershed Consulting Associates. And the project has to be completed by the end of this year uh, due to the grant terms that White River Partnership has gotten. Um, so I had a discussion, a phone call with them last week because, you know, I just discussed the difficulties the town would have at this point and, you know, putting much into the project. Uh, we weren't going to stand in the way, obviously, of having it done. Um, but, you know, we are under some serious constraints with regards to mm -hmm. um, town labor being involved. So they're going to work on that and see what ways they can come up with to minimize it. We still, there's still a, a dollar amount mm -hmm. that we have to account for one way or another. So they're going to think about ways that, you know, the town can provide match through labor without a huge amount of time from uh, the road crew. Things like hauling material out at you know after as a result of excavations and stuff possibly doing a little stabilization around the garage um, renting an excavator to do test pits and just things like that mm -hmm. um, so we'll know more once they've come up with the final design which is the final first part of the right um, so, so the work has to be done by the town crew no no, no. there's just a match requirement ah, right. the majority of work is going to be done probably by an outside contractor <coughs> I thought there would be a bidding process, I assume. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, excuse right. me, Joan, you said the contract for that project was being managed by someone, but I was typing and didn't catch it. White River Partnership is managing the contract with a consultant who's doing the design work. And that's Watershed Consulting Associates. Is Greg um, Russ the contact person still, or is it uh, Well, it's, I deal with Mary Russ. Yeah. Um, yeah there is possibility that Greg could uh, be the um, contracts the construction supervisor yeah. which would also be match as well and that's one less thing for the town to have to do so i'll let you know more about that when time comes that's all for now thank you thank you yeah. um tony have you got any updates from the library or are we just here for the general information <laughs> well i'm really just here but for that but i think uh this Thursday, there's a speaker that I think will be particularly interesting, talking about uh, various aspects of history in the valley, oh, yeah. gravestone things. That so you can read about that on the posters. I don't have to yeah, talk about it. Too, but, it yes, it is. It's in the Herald. <laughs> this thing. week's yeah. was very well attended. The Woodstock. Oh, that was they, very they, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, academic yeah. cars all the way around the side of the park. Yeah. Very interesting. Right. My wife was there, actually. It was, yeah. The library, the shining jewel of Rochester. <laughs> all right. For sure. Um, <laughs> we've got, Terry, have you got any, any updates here? Anything exciting to talk about? Well, uh, radio control, they come to put it in last week. Yes. But the radio wasn't talking to the <laughs> device, so they've had to order a new radio. Okay. It was brand new, but it was something funky wrong with it. So they'll be back this week, and so it'll be done. And they got the hydrant last week, so this next week, or within the next two weeks, I'll have it in. Cool. And I think I, we've got somebody that's flushing. It's got a sump pump in the sewer. I'd really like to know about it. <laughs> because it's pumping us way up in yep. water. And when we did our walk around, I didn't have, we didn't have infiltration. So, I mean, we had a little bit, but nothing that warranties what I'm taking in mm -hmm. per day. That's for sure. Somebody's got, somebody's got a sump pump that's running into the sewer, and we, I look for it, but I can't. You know, you're going to have to hit it at the same time it comes on, so that's like looking needle and haystack. So if anybody's got one, I mean, I'd be glad to come and see if we could reroute it somewhere different to help them out. Because it's, you know, I've got an yeah. extra 5,000 gallons a day going in. Wow. Wow. So you're going to put that in That's the paper, a right? That's a no. uh, That would be a village property? It's a yes, yeah. 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 In, the, in, the in the main part of the village, not the south end or the north end. It's in the main part. That shouldn't be so hard. All the way up Brook Street. All the way up Brook Street. Yeah. 
You want to talk about the Forest Service people we had? They were coming to the bridge? Oh, that was a... Um, yeah, you were there. Yeah, yeah, it was there. Basically, we... Um, the um, This area of the National Forest District was uh, host to a... Um, basically a show and tell from foresters from around the country um, looking at, by your house, we were looking at the new bridge on um, Wing Farm Road and just talking about uh, water management and fish management and they were, um, they were, um, Chris Matrick and, yeah. and Dan McKinley were doing some show and tell and people were impressed. And where did these people come from? Too? All over the country. Okay, thank yeah. you. As far away as Alaska was the farthest away that I heard someone talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So they were looking at this wing brook. They were looking at wing brook and they are looking at the, the bridge there and how it was put in and with the help of the White River Partnership and the support of the town. And uh, they seemed surprised at um, the amount of cooperation the Forest Service was getting from the town, which is like, I mean, yeah. well, come on, we're, yeah. anyway, um, we're happy to have cooperation from them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I shout out yeah. to say, no, no problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When was that, Wednesday? Yeah, yeah. last Wednesday. Yeah. Um, okay. That was all you had for the utilities there? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So yeah, whoever's got the sump pump running, it's definitely been wet enough to for people to run sump pumps. But yeah. Okay, we did that. Um, Marvin, you wanted to talk about the park and right. the high school graduation. There is a, uh, as we all know, there's a park committee, but I know the select board has to give permission to the use of the park. Mm -hmm. Now then, uh, my suggestion is, and I really in, in, uh, am enthused, enthused about the participation of the farmer's market, but the farmer's market uh, uh, vendors ought to be moved around some. I'm coming from a farm background where I know we had to move the cattle once in a while from pasture to pasture. However, the, the park needs to be some rest along by the sidewalk across from Pierce Hall. And it seems like to me that the select board could ask the uh, vendors and or the, the uh, farmer's market mm -hmm. uh, committee that are setting it up to put it along another side of the park. There would still be plenty of parking Mm -hmm. uh, on the grass, as we all do anyway, and so forth. But uh, right now, the uh, the soil is is grass bare. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. dirt uh, there between the sidewalk and the first row of trees where the vendors set it set yeah. up. Yeah. And the farmers market is being well attended, and I want it to continue. But I don't see a problem moving it on one side, another side, at least. You would get somewhat of a of a breather, mm -hmm. if you would. Rejuvenation. Rotate. Naturally. Rotate. Yeah, rotate. Rotating it. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly correct. Now, I, I had also heard that the grass on the front of the park yeah, is, is. Not, yeah. not coming back this spring. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and it is a, because the farmer's market is relatively new, maybe three years, but it, the participation is increasing. It's growing. And yeah. it's on a regular basis, yeah. you yeah. see. Yeah. Then we have the other celebration no, once idea. a yeah. year, but this is every yeah. week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, just a suggestion yeah. that the select board could pass along. All right, that's a good idea. Does it get now receded? I have another. Does it get receded? Come again? Does, does well, yeah. It doesn't, doesn't get a chance to take. You see. Yeah. You, you can't. Yeah. You gotta it's, let give it a rest. Gotta give it some time. And, yeah. And that would be nice to recede it and mulch it actually. That would mm -hmm. be a good thing to do, yeah. and uh, that would have hasten the whole rejuvenation. Yeah. But my other uh, uh, question is, aside from the park now, that the select board is in charge of a couple of donations to Rochester graduating <laughs> seniors. Now there's graduations all over the place, and our seniors are scattered around, and but the select board is still going to uh, uh, 
make arrangements for this uh, uh, donation to the graduating senior. There's two of them that I've been presenting now for a number of years, mm -hmm. the Martin Farms and the, uh, and the Mrs. Kirkpatrick uh, donation that the select board has entire uh, control of. And uh, not not the not the. Uh, oh, uh, I did not know that. I sent you a school and so mm -hmm. forth. I think I sent an email to both. So I would it, be willing it, to present them regardless where it is. Mm -hmm. Is what it amounts to. Right. Right. The, um, so up until now, we had had recommendations of who yeah. should receive those by the, the, the school here now. So this makes it a little more complicated if there they're no off at, at other that. schools. I mean, who would be making the determination who is who to receive those? Well, you know. that is all done by the faculty in the, the settings in the school in that the is school. receiving our yeah. children. Yeah. Martha? Um, I was just going to tell you, I was concerned about this because I've covered Rochester graduations for 31 years with Harold and now there isn't one. Mm -hmm. And so I started, I, I knew one of the kids who would have graduated this year was Travis Mead and I spoke to his mother who gave me a list of eight or nine kids that would have graduated from Rochester that she knew of and where they were graduating from. Um, I was going to put it in the paper, um, but you know, when they, when they do graduate or you know, like mid-June, uh, where they graduated from, et cetera. So if you need that information to help you get started, I don't know if that helps. That would help. Um, but well, I might but have do some information. Do the requirements say it has to be a Rochester High School graduate? There are no yeah, Rochester no, High School Rochester graduates. Rochester kids that are, we are paying tuition to them wherever they're going and so forth. And but to me it wasn't always the Rochester resident, it was Rochester Hancock and Granville. Right, I agree, but does it say Rochester High School graduate? Probably not. Right. And they right. basically are because well, at least Rochester is paying tuition for our children to go to where but you've got to deal with about five or six different schools. Right. That is right. correct. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. And there's only one, one in each one in in, in any of them. I do know that she told me that one of the students who was would have graduated from Rochester is um, getting a green and gold scholarship. Kimberly Taylor. Okay. Get a what scholarship? Green, green and gold scholarship. Oh, Anyway, I'm, I'm not sure about how they did that, but the paperwork showed her grades, et cetera. And, and, so. and Travis Needham's getting a full ride Travis Bryant's Norwich. Travis getting a full yeah. ride from Norwich. 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 He got four different scholarships. I mean, our kids have done pretty well for themselves. Yes, yeah. There's a kid graduating from Middlebury. There's a number of kids that they gave me names for. I don't know if I have them all, but I'm going to try to make sure I have them all by mid-June when graduation would happen. I will try to make sure I have a complete list. I just want to make sure our kids, I mean, get some. Uh, the ones that will graduate from White River Union or from Randolph, the Herald would cover anyway. You know, as far right. as naming them, et cetera. But the ones who would graduate from Middlebury or some of the other schools, yeah. we wouldn't cover. And I want to make sure they have the chance to have their names in the paper if that matters. But to me, it does. You know, somebody, somebody has to let yeah. the school know. We just have yeah. a budget. That's the of a I don't think they have I've been calling names. them, and the woman who's yeah. the guidance counselor at Middlebury Union yeah. High School has been very kind to me. She gave yeah. me the list of the kids from the third semester who made honor roll that were from our town. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to that. But, you know. So now that but we're it's unified, in your hands, you have the money, and you have to donate it or well, uh, award it. Like. Award mm -hmm. it yeah. For two Martins and who? Well, Fitzpatrick. Was, that's all I have been involved in is the Martin Farms and the uh, Mrs. Kirkpatrick. Yeah. The select board has has that money. I don't remember doing this last year. Marked. Well, I gave it last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah. I don't remember uh, yeah, we making talked a about decision. This was that last. We didn't uh, make a decision. No, the we didn't. Does. The school does. Oh, That's what so makes all it we're doing is appropriating the money. Uh, right. Probably the contact person yeah. would be the council, the guy who's council. Yes. Yeah. Right, or the school board. The unified school board. No, not the school board. The guidance council is no, no. the one. Guidance council. It is the faculty. Right. Because we did get a letter from Linda Blair. Again? We did get a letter a couple Lisa. weeks ago from yeah. Linda Blair. Lisa. Oh, okay. Lisa Blair. Lisa. Lisa. Yeah, Linda's yeah. in Florida. Yeah, right, right, right. Lisa Blair. Yeah. 
So I think we have some of that information. Yeah, because she sent one to me for the White Valley Players about the Stephen Block Award, and we talked about it at our board meeting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she was sending it out to everybody. It was to every, yeah, all, all sorts of. she could think of would award. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, um, thank you. Just uh, you know, work on figuring that out. Yeah, that yeah. Because the kids haven't grown up in those communities, and so they, you know, right? Yeah, there was there was just some discussion because it's a unified board now. Yeah. So uh, Stockbridge children would not be eligible, even though they're a unified board. Stockbridge doesn't have scholarships because they've been sending their kids to other schools forever for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's another one of those growing pains for yep. the unified right. board. Right. Right. Uh, another thing on our desk here we have is a um, um, someone wanted to talk about the 15th year of the 100 on 100 relay and the race will be scheduled on Saturday August 17th and they're seeking permission to run through Rochester on Route 100 as in the years past also looking for permission to use the elementary school parking lot as a transition area and I am um, I move to okay that second it all in favor can, uh, yeah. can you yep. give permission I, I forwarded that to Lisa at the school that part of it but the select board needed select to approve board. that yeah. town part yeah, yeah but it's, it's property is now owned by I, 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 yeah. I forwarded that to so the school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're on the, yeah. I guess we're saying as far as the town right. is to what, to whatever extent we can say that, we're, yeah. we're in favor of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I think that is getting down to the bottom of the list that I have here. Do you want us to keep coming up with stuff? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then talk it to me. Yeah. First off, Julie, I'd like to thank you for all your efforts in trying to find this information that I'm looking for. Well, that actually should go to the that you gave me at the last meeting. Well, my request was for select board meeting minutes. Okay. And I have an additional request. I've got uh, select board meeting minutes here from October, oh, wait a minute here, where am I? August 28, 2017, in which you were referred to seeing a record of a public meeting in 1938 to discuss discontinuance, I guess, in the Pine Gap Road, and it was referred to again at the, in the Pine Gap Road hearing on Monday, October 30th, 2017, where you said Pine Gap Road has been a road for many years, since 1854, ever through some discussion was held in 1939, but no action to discontinue took place. So I've got another public records request form, and I'll read this. Pursuant to the Vermont Record Act 1 BSA 315-320, I hereby request copies of the following public records. Select board meeting minutes pertain to revisions in road mileage in Bingo Basin as shown on AOT maps for 1981, 1973, and 1972. Also, I'd like the public meeting minutes referred to by Dune on August 28, 2017 and the other date that I mentioned. I am... Weren't you just reading from those, or no? I am addressing... I kind of wrote over what it says on here. Uh, in the belief that you are the custodian of such documents, if you are not the custodian, please forward my request to the proper custodian of such documents and inform me of who that person is. I hereby agree to pay reasonable and customary costs for these photocopies. I'll catch up with you after the thing for the last packet. 
if the law does not allow me to have access to some of these records, please so inform me within three business days as provided by law and inform me of the specific exemption record that applies to each record or portion of a record being withheld. If an otherwise public record has a portion that is exempt from disclosure, I request that you block out the exempt portion and release a copy of the rest of the document together with a notation of the specific exemption that applies to the portion withheld. If some or all of my requests is denied, please tell me the title and name of the person responsible for the denial. And as the law requires, please inform me of the appeal procedures available to me and the name of the person to whom an appeal may be made. And that's signed by me in front of you. So you'd like us to stop working on the roads and dig in the records here for you? Uh, we've been at this for since January, doing right? Do you, and you think that we're trying to hide anything from well, you? Well, uh, I yeah. just, I just want to see some stuff. Is that all right? The records got, are there. You can go look. I'll, I'll leave. Okay. Okay. I got a bunch of maps here. Can he do the research? These are AOT maps. Yeah, hey, you he can. can do the research. What? You can do the research. Yeah. They're public records. Public records, Harlan. Yeah. Well, I'm asking, I'm asking for some copies of this stuff, all right? You can what do the research, research and make the copies. Okay. Well. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're retired, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got time. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a shot. Uh, on August 28, 2017, this was when Mason had secured counsel to aid him research the history of the Bingo Roads. So mm -hmm. it does go back that far. And he had Tony Delorier here that day um, at that meeting. And there was some discussion about whether or not Bingo Road got, went into Hancock or not. So I have some notes, but not mm -hmm. everything that mm -hmm. he said. Go back to the, I can go back to Joanne's. And find the tape. Well, I've yep. seen AOT maps to show Pine Gap Trail being a lightly traveled road. Mm -hmm. I've seen AOT maps that show the road ending at Mason's driveway, a third class road. I've seen maps that show Pine Gap not listed on the uh, mm -hmm. official certificate of mileage. It was taken off. And I'd just like to see you know, the information available on that that explains how the decision was made. Okay? Well, I think it's a little redundant. I think all this has been gone over, and I think the three-day, uh, and according well, to the lawyer, the three-day deadline, I think, is actually well, maybe you can is answer a 15-day deadline. Yeah. When they take a road off, and they don't have it on the certificate of mileage and they don't do anything to it how does it pop up is it just who lives where that determines what kind of road they have or i mean there's maps in there that show that road is not being used for certified mileage i don't know the name of the statute but i believe the ancient road statute it's it's settled law once that that statute was settled by the state every town had an opportunity to appeal the roads once it was done whatever date that was that's the end of the matter i mean i don't know what your attorneys told you but that's yeah. that's why i understand all the towns i work in you know many of them in vermont the ancient roads well, was supposed to settle this, this. That was well, well, this is um, different places. This, is this different. one doesn't fall on the ancient roads because it's actually on the, it on the road, road map. Yeah, yeah. that's why it doesn't. Yeah. 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 There was a schoolhouse on that road. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. There's obviously a town where they don't build yeah. a schoolhouse on. Yeah. So, well, you worked on that road, did you? Uh, a replacement for Pine Gap Road? Did you work on 62? Oh, oh, you mean when it built the access? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. And what was the reason for building that access? It was what? What was the reason for building that access? Why didn't they just repair Pine Gap Road? Well, because, they, that because they, they had the gravel themselves. They took the gravel out right up there. Well, I saw uh, there's maps in there that, that show it is not on travel. 
and go back to like 1949. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. For anybody else? Probably the cheaper way to go. Mm -hmm. I would expect. Probably I don't think it's going to become Route 66. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, it's not no. your backyard. No, but I mean, Route 66. No. No. I'm being told by Mark sure. it's Route 66. So, well, I think I'll do one quick question yes. on the yeah. Mountain Project. All right. When this gets started, is I all the trucks going to be going up Burke Street? Oh, I think they'll, they'll probably be going up Apple Mountain from both sides. But That's what yeah. I was wondering. Yeah. They're going to be all in It's going possible, though. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it's like, be. We've heard rumor of building an access road to the lower part. Mm -hmm. That's to get to, the, to do the slow stabilization. Right. Yeah. It's not for yeah, we don't no, know the details but, yet. But yeah. was that coming yeah. off of? Well, I was just wondering street? if we're going to have all this traffic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's going to get worse before it gets probably better. Worse, yeah. So it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. Yeah, it is probably. <laughs> there's going to be dust. There's going to be noise. Yeah. As long as they're the going right. slow. As long as they're going <laughs> slow, right? <laughs> they keep the core right to the road. Well, they'd be going slow going up. Uh, There'll be a water truck going back and forth, spraying the road. For your information, the Henry boys. I saw, them, here now. I saw them, yeah. I yeah. mean, I didn't speak to them, but now, now I, you, I, I spoke to Bill. I have to talk to them about going on to their land. I spoke to Bill last week. Did you? Yes. Yeah, they, who assured me the boys the own it, but yeah. he's still in control. He's in control. <laughs> 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 They're all coming back on the 19th, and Bill will be with them. Oh, good. Good. Mm -hmm. so just for your information. Yes, I had a good and, long and, conversation uh, with Bill Henry, who says hello to Marvin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, his roots go very deep oh, yes. in the valley, so it, it's fun to talk to him. But they'll all be they back have, here on the 19th. They have roads and buried down here. <coughs> mm -hmm. so. I'll but anyway, they're, they're pretty much uh, want to go along with anything you need to do. He's actually, they are uh, the, the only one that really did get back to me on my letter that I sent out you know, to all the homeowners. On, you know, I, I still have to talk to Jack Wheatley. And uh, I've sent it to Kevin Doherty, David Domina, and of course the Pierce property. Yep. So. And uh, Nancy Woolley on the upper side. She's a Pierce. Mm -hmm. Pierce. Pierce. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you.